my name is Tiago Sintra. I was the evil mastermind behind the CTF. Um, how many guys tried to do CTF here? Okay. Uh, I don't know, Bruno, how many people that finish, finish it? Seven. Seven, okay, not bad. Um, I made some videos of the resolution um, of the CTF. I'm going to, to start this because I don't have much time. So basically this is, um, I made a storyline behind this. Uh, basically, besides is a organization that fights cybercrime. Cyber. 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 Say cyber again. Cyber. <laughs> <laughs> so we are fighting uh, against uh, the Russians. They have a, a, an evil botnet that we are trying to shut down. Um, I'm not going to extend the storyline of forever, but um, the CTF was um, made up of four exercises. Four challenges, um, and uh, okay, I'm going to start with the first one. The first one um, was really simple, but <laughs> I think a lot of people got stuck on here. But um, I'm going to show you that it, it was not that hard because I'm going to to start. So it's, okay, so. Everyone knows this first part, right? So this is base 64. This is really simple. You could uh, decode this with any tool that, that you, you wanted. Here I'm, I'm using uh, base 64 uh, with decode. OK. So everybody got to this part, right? I know that this isn't a very common um, encoding. Uh, and I'm talking on the, the title super encryption. Well, it's not encryption or anything. It's just an encoding. So if you see here, we have just capital letters and uh, three equals. So if we didn't know what, what it was, we could just search on Google for encoding padding equals. If you see the, the first results, you will see that there are many, many options. So the fourth result is actually a base 32 article where we see an example that uses 3 equals as padding. So from this point, we just need to decode um, with any decoder online for base 32. I didn't want to make it too easy. <laughs> OK, so this is really simple now. Uh, we see that this is hexadecimal, and we see repetitions uh, uh, on the numbers. So one could assume that this was just ASCII. Um, yeah. <laughs> so that. Not sure if you can see it, but I'm, I'm posting it here. Yeah. So this was the first flag, OK? And I'm going to prove to you that this is <laughs> the correct flag. So this is our HPEG, a precision EMP cannon that we are, now we are requesting our satellite to track the knowledge and to take it out. And that's it. This is the first. This was the first challenge. Okay, the second challenge. The title is under the flag. Um, I usually put some kind of hidden hints on the titles, and you will notice that um, specifically on the third, on the third um, challenge. But this, this is uh, I, what I give you uh, is just an image, and we have to figure out what's hidden. Uh, here in this image. So the first thing that we, I normally do in, in this kind of exercises is to use uh, stack detect because it's a very nice tool to, to analyze images. And stack detect uh, will tell us that there's actually some some uh, data appended to the end of the file. So one could also use um, a tool called Minwalk. And Minowalk will also tell you that there is um, a zip file, an encrypted zip file at the end of the of this image. So from this point onwards, you just need to um, to unzip the file. So I'm copying the, the file to a, a zip extension and then unzip it. It's asking us for a password, and Minowalk also tells us that it's an encrypted archive. So we need a password. Um, 
I'm showing here that there's actually a password. <laughs> Um, so right now we need, we need to find out what the password is, and the password must be hidden somewhere inside the, Im the image file, because it's the only thing that I can give you. <laughs> so uh, there's a tool called a tool called Exif tool, which um, spits out lots of information about the new, uh, about the image, um, and an interesting uh, property is the user comments. Um, you see that it's kind of strange. So I'm going to show you that you could also see this information on Windows. On Windows, it's, it's really simple. You just have to put your properties on the details, and it's right there, the comments. And again, um, you, could, you could identify that this is just ASCII uh, and, and X. So what I'm going to do is to decode it again. I missed, I missed the part here. And the password is better strike a lead speed mode. <laughs> um, so we have now the password to unzip the, the contents of the zip of the, the zip inside the image. And there we have it. The, we have the node ID inflated. Now we just need to get and we get the flight. Pretty simple. Again, I'm, I'm transmitting this to our satellite. <laughs> and it's firing an EMP blast. So we got two nodes now. And we're going to the, the third uh, challenge. Um, this, this challenge was interesting. <laughs> uh, the people were really creative. <laughs> so basically, what I'm saying here is that um, we intercepted some some uh, some network packages, um, some network packets, and we need to analyze it. So I I give you a link to a, a pcap file. I'm going to download it and uh, open it on Wireshark. You could also use Network Miner or any other tool that opens pcap. I'm using Wireshark. <coughs> when you open the file, um, this is where <laughs> things get, get complicated. I try to do this as simple as possible. So, in my opinion, um, <laughs> it would be very straightforward. But people got um, creative. Creative in this one. So, let me just uh, pause for a second because um, this pickup file, as I actually extracted this from a a malware, malware analysis on the internet. What I did was to, to strip out all the HTTP traffic, and I injected my 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 uh, my HTTP, HTTP traffic that I did on my VMs. But I left some uh, <laughs> some other data which was not uh, HTTP, and a lot of people were um, losing time on that uh, because it's actually. Um, real traffic that was <laughs> so we that was a Gmail account with a password, <laughs> key logging and stuff. <laughs> but the thing is, this was supposed to be simple, right? So uh, if it was me, I would just search for HTTP. <laughs> I put an HTTP filter. <laughs> So what we have here, uh, now I'm going to follow the TCP stream, and we see here that uh, basically it's like a page that redirects uh, three times, and it gives us a hint that to follow the path waypoints to retrieve it. It's the encrypted key. <laughs> so here we see that um, the body is, uh, each red redirect is a part of the payload. <laughs> As you see here, it's the first part of three, two part of three. I think this was kind of logical. So um, I think the first step here is to concatenate everything. This is what I, I'm doing here. I'm concat concatenating everything. So for some of you, um, we'll look at this, and right away you will see immediately what it was. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it was actually brain fuck for, for those of you who don't know it. Um, but for those of you who didn't know uh, what this is, the title actually had uh, hidden meanings. And you will see uh, why. The title is Wired Language. So if you search on Google for Wired Language, <laughs> I'm going to search on Google for wired language. And notice that Google uh, corrects you and suggests that it's weird language. <laughs> <laughs> so of course, we don't want uh, human languages. We want like digital stuff. So, so we could add like people. <laughs> You're evil. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like computer languages, because that's what we are talking about right here. So any one of these links will show you uh, right away what it was. So I'm going to open the, the second one from Wikipedia, which is a very trustworthy source. <laughs> uh, and it, uh, they're talking about esoteric programming languages. So I'm going to scroll down a bit, and there are examples for each, each uh, weird language. And I scroll, up, scroll down a bit more. There's Ante Arnold Schwarzenegger, which is very <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and there we have it. We have um, an example of brainfuck language. Okay. So right away we will see that uh, it's brainfuck. So what we need now is just to decode this using a, a brainfuck decoder. <laughs> 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 so we're going to decode our our uh, encrypted text, and there we have it. We have the node ID. Okay. Once again, I'm going to put this on our uh, HPAC interface. <laughs> I think this 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 uh, it was a lot of fun to create. <laughs> okay, and the, the last challenge um, was a very simple reverse engineering um, challenge. Not anything near remotely like what Marco did. <laughs> um, maybe for next year it's a MIP32 architecture. <laughs> So what I'm seeing here that, is that um, we found the port on a machine that allowed us to download a botnet uh, client. So I don't download this client, and um, I'm going to open it for you. Of course, it's very uh, you could run this without any problems because it's a malware client, right? <laughs> so it, it's basically Checking uh, is asking us for an encryption password. Since I don't know what the password is. I'm going to put something, and it says invalid password or checksum. So uh, one thing that you could be tempted to do was to okay, maybe it's asking us for a password, but uh, passing that password phrase, the node ID uh, will be uh, outputted right away. So one could uh, think that, okay, let's search for strings in this executable. Um, minus n19, which is the, the size of the, the node ID, if you, if you think it, it's 8 plus 3, uh, 16 plus 3. Uh, but if you notice, um, there is no node ID here. That's because I have encrypted it. Uh, it's using a short encryption, so you will never <laughs> you will never retrieve it just by strings using strings on this executable. So we have, we'll have to um, do a little bit of reverse engineering, and I'm going to show you uh, how simple it was. I'm just going, going to open uh, Immunity. I may increase the letter font so you can see it. So I'm going to run the program to, to get to the entry point. And then I'm going to scroll down. Uh, 
The computer wants for you. You should do. Okay. So I'm going to scroll down a bit on the, the code to get to the uh, to the interesting stuff. We already know that the program is asking us for a encryption, encryption password. So here we'll we'll find the readout of that of that uh, string, and then we here we see that the program is asking us for a password, and now we see the, the good stuff here. So if you, if you notice here, it's the logic between getting an invalid password or a password accepted. So a simple way to, to check this would be uh, to find reference for this password accepted uh, line. So we see that immunity gave us that the a reference is this jump. So it's, it's just a, basically it's just a jump, if not zero. So if you reach here in the code, um, I'm going to put a breakpoint here and uh, run the code. <coughs> Eventually the, 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 the code will uh, reach this part and uh, make the validation of the password. So I'm going to put something which is not the password, obviously. Um, so we are seeing here that the immunity uh, is telling us it's, it's a breakpoint and it's telling us that the jump is, will not be taken. So we want to take this jump because we are we want to go to the password accepted, not the invalid password. So this is really simple uh, because, uh, oh yeah, by the way, uh, EAX is zero and it's comparing to zero. So that's why it's, uh, it's not jumping because uh, it will jump only if it's not zero. So what we can do here is very basic. It's just we switch, switch the jump if not zero to jump if zero. And this was one of the many solutions you could. I heard that there are some people that change uh, the beats of the flag of the comparison, the beats, or of AEX. You could go lots of ways. Here I switch to 74, which is the jump if equal. And now we see that the immunity is telling us that the jump will be taken. So right now I'm going to, to do a step over and actually see the code uh, jumping to the password accepted. And there we have it. Now I'm going to run. And the pro program will decrypt the password and give us the, the node ID. I'm going to, to put this on a notepad so you can see it. And there you have it. We find the, the last flag and the main con uh, command and control uh, node ID. It was simple. <laughs> and this was the final exercise. And if you could reach here, you would see this. We have the fried circuits. And you would be awarded. <laughs> Title Ackerman. <laughs> okay, this is it, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>